everyone out there. My name is Sarah Brown, and I am a math teacher at Wing Luke Elementary School. I teach third, fourth, and fifth graders. I want you all to know that your teachers uh, and everyone who works at your school really misses you, and we're thinking about you every day. This lesson is uh, for anyone who's interested, but we're going to be going over two by two digit multiplication. And this is something that we want fourth graders and fifth graders to be really solid with, to understand it and be able to know how to do it in multiple ways. Um, it will likely be review, but it will be great practice. So before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to your classmates today. Um, we have mole over here, the avocado. We have uh, chicken soup, the alligator. We have uh, Neville, the narwhal. And then over here we have Sahara, the hedgehog. So they're gonna be learning with you today. We're gonna to start with a warm up. So my question here is which one does not belong? So we have four numbers here, nine, 16, 25, and 43. And your task right now is to figure out which one of these numbers does not fit with the others. So I'm gonna give you a moment to think about it, and then we're gonna see what your classmates think. Which one doesn't belong? All right, chicken soup can't wait any longer. Chicken soup, what do you think? Which one doesn't belong? Oh, chicken soup says nine doesn't belong. Nine doesn't belong because what? Oh, because uh, nine is a single digit number. 16 has two digits, one and six. 25 has two digits, two and five. 43 has two digits, four and three. Thank you, chicken soup. Oh, what's that, mole? Oh, mole has a different idea. Mole, mole says chicken soup is wrong. Mole, just listen. Okay, let's find out. Mole says, no, nine still doesn't belong, but it but doesn't belong for a different reason. All of these numbers add up to seven. What? Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, cool. One plus six is seven. Two plus five is seven. And four plus three is seven. Hey, you're both right. Oh, whoa. Okay, Neville. Neville's got something cool. Okay, we're gonna need to look. Neville, Neville's built something. Take a look at this before we hear from them. Oh. Okay, Neville says that 43 doesn't belong because you can't make a square out of 43. So here's nine, and we have three rows and three columns, and three times three is nine. It makes a square. Okay, starting to get this idea. 16, four rows, one, two, oops, excuse me, I'm so sorry. Four rows and then four columns, four times four, is 16 makes a square. These are square numbers. Very cool. 25, five rows, five columns. Five times five is 25. What's this? Oh, Neville wants you to know that he tried really hard, or they tried really hard, and couldn't make a square out of 43. So 43, in this case, doesn't belong. Yeah, Sahara? Okay. Sahara says 117 doesn't belong. Sahara, 117 isn't even on this grid. I guess that's why it doesn't belong. Okay, that's our warm up. Um, we're gonna get into our lesson now. And our lesson is going to involve a word problem. So uh, we are going to read a word problem, think about it, and solve it. Have you heard that uh, buying toilet paper is a competitive sport right now? 
It is. And here's a word problem that investigates that idea. So um, at your school, you probably have a way that you like to work through word problems. At Wing Luke, we love something called three reads. So give it a try. Our first read is going to just be wondering what the problem's about. So I'm going to read it, and you're going to make a movie in your mind. And try to imagine, you can even close your eyes, try to visualize what's happening in this story. Don't worry about numbers. Don't worry about specific information, just what the problem's about. In 15 minutes, 85 shoppers each bought a pack of 27 rolls of toilet paper. How many toilet paper rolls did they buy in all? Yeah, chicken soup? Oh, this problem's about buying toilet paper. It's that simple. So now you have that idea in your mind. Some people are buying toilet paper. Oh, and they're buying it really fast. There's a lot of people buying toilet paper really fast. All right, let's get into the next read, second read. Second read is, what is this problem asking you to figure out? What do we need to do? What is, the, what is, there, a quest, is there a question here? What's the question? OK, listen again. And this time, I want you to read along. In 15 minutes, 85 shoppers each bought a pack of 27 rolls of toilet paper. How many toilet paper rolls did they buy in all? OK, we're trying to figure out the total number of toilet paper rolls. How many toilet paper rolls were bought in all? And these words, in all, sometimes can really be a tip off that there's a total involved, that you're trying to find a total. OK, third read. Third read is when we figure out what the important information is. OK, so this time, um, I'm going to have you read out loud and read with me. OK, and I want you to figure out as we read what information is important? If you have a paper and pencil close by, you can write it down, or you can just listen and hold the information in your mind. In 15 minutes, 85 shoppers each bought a pack of 27 rolls of toilet paper. How many toilet paper rolls did they buy in all? Okay. Oh, Sahara? Sahara says, it's really important that we know that there are 85 shoppers. That's important information. Because they're each going to buy toilet paper, so we need to know how many of them there are. OK, Neville. Oh, Neville says, we have to know how many rolls of toilet paper they each bought. So they each. Okay, and that's a tip off that we're, these are equal groups, right? So maybe we're going to be multiplying or dividing. So they each bought 27 rolls. Okay, Molly wants to know 15 minutes, that's another number, we need to use the other number, right? 15 minutes, is that important information for this problem? Think about it. So that can help you with that movie in your mind to visualize the problem. 15 minutes is not very long for 85 shoppers to buy toilet paper. But do we need to know that number in order to see how many toilet paper rolls they bought in all? This time we don't. Okay, So that's not important information. I'm not going to write it down. So we remember that we're trying to figure out how many toilet paper rolls. So I'm going to write my open answer statement, and then I'll come back to it at the end. Okay. How many toilet paper rolls did they buy in all? They bought, and I'm going to write a line here that I'll fill in later. They bought blank toilet paper rolls in all. OK? So now let's solve it. I come over here. So we have 85 groups of 27. Sahara says, oh, I know. We can just 
add up 27 85 times. So first chopper bought 27, second chopper bought 27, 7 plus 7 is 14, 10 plus 20 plus 20 is 50, 54. Okay, so I'm going to have to keep track here. One, two, third, third chopper. Okay, that would be the third chopper, so we're at 81 rolls. Is anyone bored yet? This feels like it's going to take a really, really long time, and I don't think the paper is long enough. Okay, mathematicians love shortcuts. So we're going to use a shortcut. So what we're starting to do here is repeated addition, which multiplication is just a shortcut for addition. Um, if we're going to do this 87 times, it is very likely that we're going to make a mistake, just a little mistake, like four times seven, four plus seven is 12, right? And then we get off. So let's do a shortcut. I know that most of you are really familiar with bar models. So let's model this problem. So we know that the rolls of toilet paper have, uh, excuse me, the packs of toilet paper have 27 uh, rolls in each pack. There's the first shopper. Here's the second shopper. I know at the end there's going to be 85 shoppers. So I'm going to use ellipsis in the middle. That means that there's a lot in between. In fact, the third shopper all the way to the 84th shopper, right? So 85 groups of 27, what we don't know is the total. So what I'm going to show you right now is how to do the area model. There's lots of different ways that we can solve multiplication problems. And this is one that um, helps us really to see what we're doing and why we're doing it. So, um, Older family members, I know that a lot of times uh, you see work come home and you're not sure, what? I didn't learn this way. I don't even know what they're asking them to do. Why don't they just show them the standard quick way? Well, like I just said, mathematicians love shortcuts, but we have to understand first why we're doing what we're doing. And so this way that I'm going to show you, the area model, helps kids understand conceptually, and then later we can make shortcuts. I encourage you to solve it quick, if you like, older family members who might be watching, and um, see how the numbers that you get are related and show up in the way that I'm about to teach. Okay, So we're going to start with expanded form. So we know that our problem is 85 times 27. And I didn't know this until I was a math teacher. It's kind of embarrassing to admit, but it's true. I didn't know that it mattered what order you write numbers when you're multiplying. The first number is the number of copies. The second number is how many is in each group. So number of groups, how many are in each group, OK? So 85 times 27. I'm going to take 85 apart into expanded form. This is not an 8. This is an 80, OK? You can build that language with your students. This is a 5. 80 plus 5 is 85, OK? 20 plus 7. So when you're doing the area model, you need to make sure that you break the numbers apart into expanded form first. Okay. And now I have two numbers multiplied by two numbers. This grid would look different if you were doing three numbers by one number, three digits by two digits. Um, and in that case, you would have the same number of columns as there are digits in the first number and the same number of rows as there are digits in the second number. Okay? So in this case, I have 2 by 2. Okay. So I'm going to write 80 and 5, and double check, 85, 85. It can be really easy when you're starting out to get numbers in the wrong spots or accidentally do 80 and 20 on top, 5 and 7 on the side. So take your time setting this up. Okay? And if you're at home, you can be writing this along with me so that you have an example that you can practice from. And then you can use any two-digit numbers. And then you can move on to three-digit numbers. Or you can try it with two digits by one digit, three digits by one digit, four digits by one digit. Okay? So then I'll write on the left side 20 and 7. So now, if you're familiar with the multiplication chart, we're going to do it just in that way. This is the 80 column and the 20 row. 
So 80 times 20, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and write out all my equations and I'll come back and solve them. Five times 20. I'll put my equal signs, okay? 80 times seven. Five times seven. Okay, so coming up here, this is actually eight tens times two tens. So I'm gonna do eight times two, which I know is 16, tens, hundreds. So sometimes people like to say, oh, you just add two zeros. Well, no, you don't. What's 16 plus zero? Just 16. We're gonna append two zeros. So zero, sometimes I'll just put a little dot underneath to track that, okay? So tens, hundreds, 1,600. Okay, now let's come over here. This one can be tricky, okay? Because five times two is 10. It's two tens, but sometimes we'll think, oh, there's already a zero here. I don't need to put anything on the end. You do. Five times two is 10, right? But then we're gonna put that 10 in the tens place to get 100. Sometimes it can feel kind of cluttered, so I like to circle the product, okay? Oh no, eight times seven, okay. That is the one fact that was tricky for me that I still have to stop and think about. So I'm gonna use a multiplication chart. I'm gonna show you later how you can make your own multiplication chart that can help you with this, okay? So I'm gonna go down the eights column and I'm gonna count seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can double check here. Yep, that's the sevens row. And the product is 56. Okay, now I can be sure so I can write that down. 56, but that's 56 tens. Okay, underline, dot. Then five times seven, oh yeah, I knew my fives. That's much easier. Okay, five times seven is 35. And there's no zeros to append because that's five ones and seven ones. Okay, now we have four numbers. That's not gonna, that's not doesn't tell us yet how many toilet papers were bought or the rolls were bought. So now we need to add them up, okay? And so I'm going to go ahead and add 1,600 plus 100. And in the standard algorithm, families, what you're doing is 85 times 20. And you'll see that show up in your second row um, in your standard algorithm when you're adding up the numbers. Okay, zero plus zero, zero plus zero, six plus one, good. So I have 1,700 here. And then I'm just double checking to make sure that all looks right, it does. And I'm then gonna add 560 plus 35. Sometimes I just like to check it off to make sure I use each number, okay? So 560 plus 35, zero plus five, six plus three, five plus nothing. Okay, I'm gonna switch colors here because we're getting, this is a really important part. So, 1,700, let's put the comma in, one, okay, ones, tens, hundreds, comma. Okay, ones, tens, hundreds, oops, no comma because there's no number in the thousands place. We've got uh, 85 times 20 is 1,700. 85 times seven is 595. So let's add those up together. Zero plus five, zero plus nine, seven plus five. And we end up with a product of 2,295. Okay, whoa, that's a lot of toilet paper. Let's come back over here and put it into our answer statement. They bought 2,295 toilet paper rolls in all. Double check, we got it, okay? Thank you. So again, um, uh, you can be making multiplication problems, just coming up with random numbers is fine, or looking around your home and seeing if there's anything um, that, uh, 
that you could make into a multiplication problem. Maybe you have, um, or your home or wherever you are right now, right? I know that not all of you are at home. Um, uh, you could see if um, on packages of food where you could come up with multiplication problems, um, you could uh, just look for math in the world around you and I promise you that you'll find it, okay? I'm gonna show you an activity now that you can do at home and that is making your own multiplication chart. I know that some of you have done this before and then some of you haven't, um, but this is something that anyone who can draw a grid and add numbers together, um, your biggest number is going to be uh, 144. So even younger students can do this or this can be good practice as well for older students. So um, the first thing that you're gonna do is to draw a 12 by 12 grid and a kind of side challenge assignment that you could do is you could um, get a ruler if you have that available to you and you could make a six inch by six inch uh, grid and then you can figure out how big does each square need to be for there to be 12 columns and 12 rows. So that's a side project. Then you can compare the areas of six by six inches and then 12 by 12 squares. Um, so um, in order to do this, uh, you can make your, make your grid. Um, if you need some help getting started with that, you can uh, draw a rectangle, cut it in half, cut it in half, right? For the columns, cut each half and half, each half and half, and then you'll have four columns. Um, uh, you could also then, because four times three is 12, you can cut each fourth into three parts, or you can just draw it freehand and add columns and rows as you need to, okay? So um, write a one in the corner, and then count by ones all the way to 12. One here on the top, count by ones all the way to 12, and then you can fill in what you know. So if you count by twos, you know those pretty easily, you can do it vertically, and then you can do it horizontally. Then I like to put in my fives and tens, those are pretty easy, okay? 11s are fun, 11, 12, 33, 44, okay? And so forth until you have all the numbers uh, filled in. Um, if you need help with skip counting, you can draw, like let's say you were working on sixes. Those can be tricky sometimes. You can draw six circles, and then you can count them like six, jump off of six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right at 12, come back, jump off of 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay? Or you can use objects that you have around. Um, in order to use that to solve uh, multiplication problems, I know you saw me look down for eight times seven, follow my eight column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then follow it, uh, excuse me, and then follow, follow that to 56, and then double check to make sure that you're on your sevens row. There's a lot of different ways to do this, and in future lessons, we'll talk about how to use it for division, okay? Um, so today, thank you so much. We're done with our activities. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for being flexible in this really unexpected time, and I know that some of you are feeling anxious. Um, please send happy and positive thoughts to all the researchers and the doctors who are working on a vaccine and a cure for this virus because you know that kids are the most powerful people of all. So try to be nice to your family at this time and remember that everyone at your school is thinking about you and we love you very much.